Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to discuss artificial intelligence linear and non-linear planning with the help of some examples and its key feature. We will discuss everything in detail. Now let's just start the session. So as we all know, linear planning is nothing but it is a planning that flows on a straight line. Right, this is the basic working of linear planning. So basically students, it is a planning in which all the actions that we are going to take are always organized in a strict and totally ordered sequence. As you can see here, linear planning assumes a strict sequence of actions where each action leads directly to the next. This is the general meaning of linear planning. Here each action has exactly one predecessor and one successor and always remember this plan flows in a straight line from its initial state to the goal state right linear planning simply can also be written as sequential planning sequential planning and also known as total order planning So, total order planning, sequential planning and linear planning all are same. It is called total order planning because the order of action is fully specified in advance. Now, we have some features of linear planning in AI. So, the first feature is here actions are arranged in a linear order. Only one action is executed at a time. This particular feature is very, very important. Another is the result is a single plan or a straight line path and next feature is no concurrency or alternative paths are there. Concurrency means duplicacy. So there is no duplicacy, there is no alternative path to achieve the goal. We just have to follow the linear or we just have to follow the sequential path to achieve our targeted goal. Right? Other than these, we have some more features. Like the first feature is its total order. As its name implies, it is also called total order planning. So it is also its feature. Here all the actions are strictly ordered. That's why it is called total order. No ambiguity and flexibility is there. Another feature can be your single path, single plan path. This means only one possible path is considered as a, at a time. From initial level to the goal level, we have only one path at a time that is working, right? Next we have this. Next feature is it does not have any branching system. As it is a sequential flow, as it has a sequential flow of data, so no branching is allowed here. No decision point or forks in the plan is allowed here, right? So, the fourth point we have is deterministic execution. It's deterministic execution. So, actions are executed one after another without any overlap. Another feature is its simplicity. As we all know, this is this particular planning is very easy to model and implement using algorithms like forward state space. I'm writing here forward state space. Search algorithms are used under this backward chaining. Backward chaining is also used. That's why it is called a simple model. Another feature is goal decomposition. Goals are often solved one at a time in the order of appearance. Another feature can be precondition satisfaction. Precondition satisfaction. 
Each action is placed such that its preconditions are satisfied by earlier actions. This is called precondition satisfaction in case of linear planning. Now let's just talk about some examples. So examples in AI context can be pick up an object. Like I am making, I have an, I have a robot, robotic arms. And we need a robot to do pick up an object, move it to a new location, place it on a table. So all these are linear programs that are already planned, that are already included in any AI system. Let's take one more example. Suppose you are planning to cook a meal. A linear plan could be, first can be a, a, you will buy vegetables chop those vegetables, cook the vegetables and then serve the meal. This is what? This is a linear sequence of planning if you are planning to cook a meal. This is how linear planning in AI also works. We have so many pros and cons of linear planning. So, under pros, it is very simpler and easier to implement. Yes, that we have already discussed. Another pros can be it is suitable for straightforward, straightforward and well-structured problems. And its cons includes, it is inflexible to change in the environment. For example, if there is a linear planning system in one place, we can use it in another condition, in another scenario. Mein, we cannot use that. Another disadvantage can be, not efficient for complex or dynamic domains. If our domains, if our protocols are uh, dynamic, then we cannot use linear planning system. Now, let's just talk about non-linear systems. So, students, non-linear is also known as expanded system. Right? So, non-linear planning allow actions to be partially ordered. Actions can be partially ordered. That means some actions can be left unordered relative to each other as long as the final goal is achieved and all dependencies are satisfied. That's why it is called partial order planning or one more name we have is least commitment planning. Least commitment planning right this allow for concurrent or interleaved actions and is useful in multi-agent or parallel systems let's take an example first then we will discuss the features right so partial order planning non-linear planning while cooking you could buy vegetables and spices at the same time that is a parallel action right you can chop vegetables while water is boiling to clean the vegetables. This is what a partially ordered function, right? Another can be these tasks don't have to be strictly sequential if they don't depend on each other. I hope students everything is clear till now. Now let's just talk about some features. So first feature can be its partial order. That means only necessary constraints are imposed on the order of actions. Plans are represented as partial orders that are not strictly sequential. Some actions can occur concurrently. That means if you are chopping the vegetables simultaneously, maybe you are singing some songs. These two tasks are not really dependent on each other. We always do two tasks at the same time. Like at once I am let's say recording this session for you at the same time maybe i am downloading some movie in my system i am writing some notes for my next class anything can be done simultaneously that is not actually dependent on each other that is done under non linear planning system it offers more flexibility and efficiency it uses least commitment strategy that that's why it is called least commitment planning Another can be its flexibility. 
So non-linear planning systems are really, really very flexible. They can adapt to different environments or interruptions at the same time. Another function can be it is more expressive. It is more expressive means it can repeat complex and dynamic environments better. It also includes threat resolution. That means threat re resolution means it can handle conflicts using techniques like promotion or demotion, etc. Right? Now, let's just compare these two different methods. So, first is linear planning, another is non-linear. The order of action here is fixed sequence. That is all that it always follows a sequence. Another is non-linear planning. It is partial and flexible ordering. Parallel actions that means simultaneous works cannot be are not allowed in linear planning. Whereas it is allowed in non-linear planning. If we talk about its complexity, so it is very simpler and it is more complex. Flexibility is low or we can say there is no flexibility in linear pro planning system. And if we talk about flexibility in non-linear, yes, it is highly very, very flexible because we can do one then more than one task at the same time in non-linear planning. Simple problems, it is used for simple problems. It is used in case of complex and dynamic problems. Right, everyone? So, in other than these, we have some other comparisons. In case of linear planning, it is generally a goal by goal method. And if we talk about non-linear planning, it is basically a least commitment approach. Right? Adaptability ki agar hum log baat kare, so linear planning is basically its adaptability is poor in dynamic environment and if we talk about adaptability in non-linear planning, so it is good in dynamic and complex environments. So I hope students everything is clear to you. If you want me to continue this series then definitely you can share your feedback. You can comment below. So let's just end the session. Thank you so much and all the very best.